Perfect Beauty is probably one of the most talked about skincare brands in our private Facebook group. I also just get DMs about it, people are always messaging, and the thing they want is a full review. So guess what, you guys? Today, I'm gonna give you a full review of Crave Beauty. Before I get started, I will say this video is sponsored by Crave Beauty, but before you get turned off by that, I wanna tell you guys, I told them before we decided on this video, I was like, a full product review is a little risky because I might have some things to say. There might be a chance that I, I don't like a product or something. And they were so confident about their brand that they were like, no, 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 go for it say what you need to say about our brand. So I, I really give it to them because they're that confident and they trust their products that much. And I'll say, it's pretty much true. Like I have some thoughts about each of these products that I think are noteworthy, things that you guys should know about the usage and you know, like some of the comments that I've seen, if there has been any like negativity, which is kind of the wrong word because I haven't seen any negative comments about anything from this brand, but I have seen questions about the products and how to use them and if they're maybe not right for a person. So I will I'll answer some of those questions within this video, but I'm gonna start with my thoughts on the brand overall first. All right, so if you didn't know, this brand was started by Leah Yu. She's a fellow content creator, so I have to actually like give her some props for that because I haven't seen too many content creators create skincare lines specifically. I think it's like a big venture to take on, so I really give her credit because she went ahead and moved forward with it and she created something that I think is great overall. All of the products are very user-friendly. She created it with vegan-friendly, cruelty-free, irritant-free ingredients, which I think is something that a lot of consumers are constantly asking for these days. And I feel like a lot of brands aren't listening to what the consumers are saying. It's something that we talk about a lot in our private Facebook group is what are we looking for? And we're looking for products that are fragrance-free. We're looking for products that are irritant-free, essential oil-free. We're looking for stuff that, you know, is just very easy to use and very straightforward and not going to harm our skin. You know, there's a lot of products out there to choose from these days and there's a lot more information out there but I feel like sometimes it's so overwhelming that we can do more harm to our skin than actually helping our skin so I feel like this is a great brand to really press reset which is her hashtag for this brand is to go back to the basics and really heal your skin barrier with her product so I really love the approach that she's taking with this another thing that I like about this brand is that she formulates everything in Korea and I think Korea is very innovative I think that they are kind of, you know, on top of it when it comes to new ingredients to use, how to formulate things, how people are gonna react to it, and also just being just innovative in general with their technology for skincare. And the last thing I'll point out is that I think the pricing is very reasonable. I wouldn't call it affordable necessarily, but for what she's giving you and for the amount of product that you're getting and the quality of the product, you're paying really great prices for this. And she made it really fun. She made it feel like this is a treat for yourself, but the prices are very reasonable. Now I wanna get into each of the products. Products. There aren't that many, there are only five products right now. So let's start with the Matcha Hemp Hydrating Cleanser. This is by far my most favorite product from the entire line, which is another reason why I wanted to start with it. You guys know I love a good cleanse. Like cleansing to me is such an important step in your skincare routine, especially at night, but it all comes down to using the right cleansers. Like you have to have the right cleansers or you can actually destroy your skin. This one is what I would say, probably the product that everyone, in my opinion, should purchase. Like if there's any product that you were considering for Crave Beauty, this is the one and it's because it's just, it's the perfect second cleanse to me or like the first morning cleanse. So you guys know, I love a double cleanse. I'm never gonna probably stray away from that. Double cleanse is like hands down, something that everyone should be doing if you're wearing anything on your skin during the day. So I would obviously love to see Crave Beauty create a oil cleanser or a balm cleanser or something along those lines that serves as the first cleanse. But I think as far as the second cleanse or like as a morning cleanse, this is an amazing product. What I like about this is that she really, again, she's listening to the consumers out there and she's really focusing on the pH. So it has a pH between 5.0 to 6.0, which is what you want your cleanser to have because it's keeping your skin barrier at like a very neutral acidity. You don't want your skin to be too alkaline and you don't want it to be too acidic. So you wanna make sure it's just at that very perfect pH because that keeps your skin barrier healthy. And that's what you wanna focus on. A lot of people will talk about that with cleansers. Do I think it matters?
matters completely with the cleanser? I'm not really sure, to be honest. When I speak to dermatologists and when I speak to chemists, it seems like dermatologists don't really worry about it because they consider the entire skincare process to be part of like managing your skincare, your skin pH versus like a chemist is like, you know, when I speak to chemists, they're like, actually starting with your cleanser is the best way to maintain that perfect pH throughout your skincare routine. So, you know, am, am I focused on that? I'm not completely focused on it, but it is something to point out because I know that a lot of consumers, again, are talking about the pH of their cleanser and she does focus on that. I really appreciate the ingredients that she went for with this cleanser too. For instance, she has Camellia sinensis leaf water in this as the first ingredient. It's like a green tea extract that she's using as like part of the formulation of this. And then later on in the ingredients list, there's also matcha, like actual green tea powder in this. So you're getting all of these antioxidants that we know are good for your skin, do we know like how it truly affects your skin barrier or anything? I don't know if we truly know, but I do love that she's kind of going for that and trying to make this something that's really healthy for your skin with the antioxidants. We also know it to be a very soothing ingredient for your skin. And that's something that I think is more important with this cleanser is that sometimes we overdo it when we're trying to cleanse our skin and we can be too rough. And also the combination of surfactants that she has in here makes it a very gentle cleanse instead of being a very harsh cleanse. It also has glycerin, which is a humectant it happens to be one of my favorite humectant ingredients in here and it's very high up in the list. You truly need just like a little dollop, like I'd say a dime size of it might even be too much, but it depends on what kind of lather you like. It does not foam up, which you guys know I appreciate, but it does lather and it gives you like a nice texture as you're using it to cleanse your face. You don't need a lot of this. For people that aren't used to using a cleanser like this that has like humectant ingredients in it, it might feel like a strange cleanser to you at first, so I'll point that out, but I encourage you to stick with it because you'll like the lather of it, you'll like the texture of it as you go, and you'll start to realize that what it's doing to your skin is actually a really great base for your skin. All right, next product is Kelleluya. I really love these names. That's so much fun. If you guys don't know what this is, it's an AHA skin exfoliator, chemical exfoliator in a toner form. And this is actually my favorite way to use chemical exfoliators. You guys know I'm all about an AHA, especially a glycolic toner for your skin because I feel like it's the best way to exfoliate your skin. It's the most gentle way, depending on the formulation that you choose. And it's just reliable. Like you can really get in there, exfoliate your skin on a daily basis and you see major results with your skin. And I feel like your makeup just goes on better. Your skincare goes on better. I just feel like everybody needs an AHA toner in their lives. If you've never used one before, this one is a great, intro AHA toner for you. And I appreciate the education that they have on their website about this. If you are a beginner, you do have sensitive skin, you can go check out their website and they give some tips on how to use it. If you don't know what AHA stands for, it's alpha hydroxy acids, they're chemical exfoliators. Chemical, I find, seems to be a scary word to a lot of people, but I wouldn't consider it scary. To me, this is just a very gentle AHA toner, but for somebody who does have sensitive skin or has never used a chemical exfoliator before, this is a great intro for you. And then the other thing I like about it is that it has hydrating humectant ingredients in this, so it's a nice prep for your next steps in your skincare routine. It's gonna keep your skin hydrated. You don't necessarily need to use a humectant serum after that. I actually wouldn't after using a toner like this because you're probably getting all the hydration that you need after using this because AHAs are also humectants. It's a really great multitasking product for your skincare routine. All right, moving on to one of the products that I get the most DMs about, and this is the Great Barrier Relief. And what people constantly ask me is, what does it do? Like, do I need this product? And I'll say that I think that this is probably one of the most genius products in the entire line because I do think it's a product that needs to be out there and there needs to be more education about products like this too and why people need them. This is a serum that is meant to heal your skin barrier. And when I say heal your skin barrier, so a lot of the time we're overusing actives. We're overusing exfoliators. We're, you know, putting way too much on our skin. We're constantly, you know, drying out our skin and then what happens happens is we damage our skin barrier and our skin barrier is what protects our skin. It's what keeps it hydrated enough. It keeps it looking nice and smooth and pretty and not feeling so sensitive. So when your skin starts to turn red and irritated and sensitive, there's a good chance that you have damaged your skin barrier. So we can do that to ourselves on accident or we can do that to ourselves on purpose. Like when we go get some major treatments done like microneedling, any kind of laser treatment, chemical peels, we're damaging our skin barrier but we're doing it on purpose and it's hopefully in a very controlled manner because you're going to an expert to do it. When you're damaging your skin barrier, you want to make sure you heal it because your skin's just not going to be okay after that. Like if you don't 
heal your skin barrier, then you're not going to have the right skin. It doesn't matter what you start to introduce into your skincare routine. It doesn't matter what makeup you put onto your skin. Your skin will not look right and it won't feel right if you don't have a good skin barrier. So that's like first and foremost, probably one of the most important things about your skin to know is that if you do too much to it, you can damage your skin barrier. If you go get a treatment, you could damage your skin barrier. And so you have to have something that helps that, right? And that's what, ta-da, this does. So does everyone need it? I kind of feel like we're all starting to damage our skin barriers. Every post that we get in our private Facebook group, you start to see this trend of people damaging their skin barriers and then they're like, what do I do to fix this? And sometimes it's really, and you know, again, this is why I think this line is genius. Sometimes you have to press reset and that's why this is such a genius hashtag around this product specifically and the whole entire line is sometimes you just gotta take it down to the basics. And so they have very specific instructions on how to use this product. Do you have to follow it to a T? I don't know, I think you can introduce this every once in a while, like if your skin's feeling a little sensitive or something, you can make this it's like the only product you use to go to bed for a couple of nights. They want you to stop everything if you truly have a damaged skin barrier and just use this. It's a technique that I, th I know a lot of dermatologists will go to if you have very damaged skin. They're like, you don't need to put a lot, you just want something like this. It has Tamanu oil in it, which has been shown in studies to stop inflammation and to help heal your skin barrier. It's also the reason why it has that greenish tone in it. It has safflower oil and rosehip oil, which I tend to find are really nice light oils and also really good for healing your skin barrier. There are ceramides in this, which definitely we know helps rebuild your skin barrier and strengthen it. There's also vitamin B3, which is also known as niacinamide, which like about a year ago, I was talking to a derm and I was like, I feel like people don't talk about niacinamide enough. And then suddenly I feel like that's all I've been hearing about is niacinamide in products these days. And it's a really wonderful vitamin for your skin. It's an antioxidant. It helps to heal your skin. I feel like a lot of people will benefit from it because it's anti inflammatory, it helps to lessen wrinkles. It's just a very all around great ingredient to introduce into your skin. Some people do react to it though. I find that I say this and then I'll get comments being like, it made me break out or it made me turn red. So obviously, it's not for everybody, but I do think if your skin can handle niacinamide, it's a great ingredient to have in your skincare routine. Safflower oil and rosehip oil are also really abundant in linoleic acid, which is known to actually repair your skin barrier. And I just also find that they're very light oils. You guys know sometimes I'm not a big fan of oils in skincare, usually when they're just by themselves. I, I actually like when they're formulated into a product like this, but I find that they're also very light. And then last, it has squalane in this, and I love squalane of all the oils that's probably my favorite to find in moisturizers and serums is squalane because I just feel like it feels good on your skin. It feels very healing and it feels luxurious and rich, but it doesn't feel too heavy. It feels like it actually does absorb into that top layer of your skin. So going back to that original question, should everybody have this product or use this product? I don't think everyone should be using this product on a regular basis. That's not what it's meant for. I don't actually think Crave Beauty intended for everyone to just use this product at all times. Is it a great product to have in your medicine cabinet at all times? Yes, because I do think that sometimes we damage our skin and we weren't expecting it. Obviously, we're not trying to always purposely damage our skin, but it's a very healing product and I think that you know, we're always exposing our skin now to ways to damage our skin barrier. And if you want to press reset, this is the product that you can use for that. Next up, Oh, it's so simple water cream. This is the newest launch from Crave Beauty. This is one of the most buzzed about launches. This really caught a lot of people's attention because it's a no frills, very straightforward moisturizer. This is probably my second favorite product in the line. It's kind of like a tie between this and the Beat Shield to be honest, but I'll tell you why. This is really a no frills moisturizer and sometimes that's all I really want is a moisturizer that just moisturizes. Like it's soothing for your skin, it's gonna moisturize your skin, it's gonna give you some hydration because most moisturizers have hydrating ingredients too, but it's not going to irritate your skin. This is the kind of moisturizer that I feel like every skin type can use. I'll tell you how you use it. And I think this is where, you know, I saw some comments about this moisturizer being like, this wasn't the moisturizer for me. This wasn't what I was expecting from it or something. I think it's about understanding how it fits into your skincare routine depending on your skin type because I think that's very important when it comes to this moisturizer specifically. So if you have sensitive skin, like let's just start with just plain old sensitive skin, this works for you. This has 10 ingredients in it. From what I've learned, the less ingredients in a, in a list, 
the less chance of irritation for your skin. They focus on oats, obviously. Oats are very soothing for your skin. When it comes to people that have oily skin, this is the perfect moisturizer. So the person that I think that this is the perfect moisturizer for in all senses of like the word moisturizer is the person who has sensitive, acneic, oily skin. This should be your holy grail product. Like you should be like, oh. Cause I always say that you should use a moisturizer. Everyone should have a moisturizer no matter their skin type. I've been challenged lately because there are videos out there by derms saying that if you have truly oily skin, you don't need to use a moisturizer because you have oil production already on your skin. I challenge that but I acknowledge they're dermatologists. The thing that I see the most that people are like crying out for help for the most are people that have sensitive, oily, acneic skin, or at the very least, like they have sensitive acneic skin and not, not necessarily oily, maybe they have dry skin. This is, this is your moisturizer, you guys. This is what you're going to use. What I think has confused a lot of people about this moisturizer is that it's very light. So for someone like me who has dry dehydrated skin, this feels more like a serum to me and that's, that's actually a good thing. Like, do do I think that that's bad? No, I know how to use it for my skin. So if I feel like I'm having a very dry day and I need a little bit more of a boost, I would put this on and then I would lock it in with a more occlusive moisturizer. So to me, this kind of is like my baseline hydrating serum slash like has a little bit of occlusive in it. So I could use it on its own because it's got like squalane in it, but I could also use it as a first hydration moisturizer and then move into something that's a little bit richer. And I think that that's a great thing for someone like me. The other thing that I like about this, there is no dimethicone in this. And I go back to people that have acneic skin, oily skin, sensitive skin, all three of those things. I feel like it's really hard for you to find a moisturizer that feels light enough and it's gel-like enough, but doesn't contain dimethicone. Do I hate dimethicone? No, but do I hate seeing dimethicone in every single product and then having to layer so much dimethicone? I don't like that. I don't like that you can't find too many products that don't have a ton of dimethicone in them because when you put too much on there, I feel like it becomes very occlusive for your skin. And I start to feel like it makes everything texture wise change as far as like the next steps of your routine. Like some people tell me that they've experienced pilling with their makeup or the next product that they put on or their makeup just like looks way too matte and they can't get it to like look right when they put powder to set it and stuff. And that's because we've probably got too much dimethicone in all of our products. So I like to be able to have a choice of not having dimethicone. And I feel like you don't find these lightweight moisturizers that don't have dimethicone in them, not too often anyway. And this one does not have dimethicone. All right, the Beat Shield, probably the most asked about product that we get in our Facebook group and DMs that I get. And I think it's because there's a confusion over whether it's sunscreen or not. I actually was confused when it came out in the very, very beginning, because I was like, is it a sunscreen? But then when you read the packaging and stuff, it says it's an antioxidant serum. So to clear it up, yes, it's a sunscreen, you guys. It's actually considered an SPF 50 sunscreen. But what makes it so confusing is that the ingredients, the sunscreen ingredients in this are approved in Korea, but they're not FDA approved here in the US. That doesn't make it a bad sunscreen. It just makes it more of like an unknown here in the US. And that's the reason why she doesn't necessarily say that it's SPF 50. So to give you some information about how that works. So here in the US, sunscreen ingredients are considered drugs. So they have to go through FDA approval before they can be used. But there's been a lot of technology since the last time the FDA has approved a chemical sunscreen ingredient, and that was in 1999. Since 1999, there's actually been an introduction of other sunscreen ingredients, and they just haven't been approved here, but they've been approved in places like Europe and in Korea. And basically the difference is, is there's just better technology behind them. They're much more innovative. They have better photo stability. They have a larger molecular structure, which just basically means that they're not gonna absorb into your skin as much, and they have broader spectrum protection. Do they work better than the sunscreens we have in the US? I don't know. No, not necessarily. This is what we're finding in these newer ingredients, but that doesn't mean that what we're using here doesn't work. You'll see something also on this kind of a sunscreen. Again, not on this one because again, we're in the US, but if you bought it in Korea, you'd see that it has PA++++. And um, what that basically means when you see like PA+, is it's just how they measure protection for UVA rays, which we know is what causes aging. So it's that premature aging, the aging that you weren't gonna necessarily get and you're causing it to happen faster. And so the more pluses that you have, this has four pluses, PA++++. 
plus. It's just a measurement for how much protection you're getting from UVA rays. You might've seen that Dr. Chu and I had a conversation about this in one of our videos and she was like, you know, as a dermatologist, she's not sure if she recommends something like this because she doesn't know, right? Like she doesn't know how it works necessarily through her training. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't pick something up like this. Some of the things that I like about this sunscreen specifically is that it feels really nice on your skin. And I think that's probably the biggest issue with sunscreens out there on the market is that a lot of them don't feel good. You get physical sunscreens and they can feel drying on your skin. They can feel too thick on your skin. They can make your skin have a white cast to them. And then you find that some of the chemical sunscreens you get out there are, you know, now we're finding all these studies that say that it might be bad for you, absorbs into your bloodstream and blah, blah, blah. You know, there's all these things. I've always said those studies are inconclusive, so I don't like follow them to a T. I just keep it in mind. But you know, a lot of people like Anna on my team is very concerned with the fact that some chemical sunscreens could potentially be damaging to the environment, specifically to reefs in the ocean. So, you know, it's something that, that I definitely keep in mind. Is it the first thing that I'm thinking about when I'm looking at sunscreen? It's not, I'm looking more for the protection and how it feels. And this feels amazing on your skin. That's probably first and foremost, like the best quality about this antioxidant serum. The second thing I like about this is it doesn't leave a white cast on your skin at all. So I feel like all skin tones can use this, which is a big challenge in my family because my husband does have darker skin than I do. And sometimes he just wants to use my sunscreen. And sometimes I'm like, sorry, you can't use my sunscreen because it won't look good on you. This one he can actually use and he doesn't even think twice about it. And he thinks it feels good too. And I also like that it has antioxidants already in it because we know that antioxidants when mixed with your sunscreen help your sunscreens just work a lot better. It's better for your skin because you're getting that protection from free radicals and then you're getting that UV protection as well. So combined, it just makes it a much better sunscreen for your skin. I'll also point out because it feels so nice on your skin and because it's something that you want to feel nice because you're you're using it, you're technically supposed to use a sunscreen every single day. I also like to point out, I love that they talked about why there is alcohol in the ingredients list of this product. It's like, I've been talking to a lot of chemists about why alcohol is still included in different skincare formulations. The reason I bring it up with them a lot is because I see it in a lot of the Korean skincare brands. We've like demonized drying alcohols here in the US a lot. But when you talk to chemists, specifically, I talked to a friend of mine named Annalisa, who's a formulator and she has her own skincare line called Stubborn Cosmetics. And she's like, you know, as a formulator, we don't demonize any ingredients because we know that they all serve their purpose. And and I love that Leah and Crave Beauty made a point to talk about why they included alcohol in this because I think they knew, again, they're listening to the consumers and they knew that alcohol might get pointed out and be demonized. So I love that they, they mentioned it, that it's in this. It helps to stabilize the UV filters in this specific product. It also helps to make it a solvent so it feels lighter and nicer on your skin. And that's one of the selling points of it is that it feels really good on your skin when you use it. So those are my thoughts about Crave Beauty. I hope that this was helpful. Obviously you can feel free to ask any questions in the comments below. I feel like a lot of you have some opinions and thoughts about Crave Beauty. So definitely share with us because all of the different opinions are very helpful for everybody. And it helps give you an informed opinion about your skincare products, this brand specifically. Well, I feel like we just have so much information out there and it can get very overwhelming and confusing. And I really think that when we all start to talk, and I'm very open to discussing and debating and everything with you guys in the comments because I do think it helps everybody learn and become a better, more informed uh, consumer. Find me on Instagram, I'm at Susan Yara. You can also join us in our private Facebook group. That's where we really get into like the nitty gritty and we start talking about like, you know, the breakdown of the ingredients, what, you know, hair care products do you like? What makeup? We talk about makeup too, you guys. You can still talk about makeup. We like that too. And then we really get into all of it with skincare in that group. So I'll leave a link below in the description box. You can also find Mixed Makeup on Instagram, at Mixed Makeup. We post a lot there too. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.